Hey everybody, this is Professor Klein here in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. Look at all those models back there that we've got on the wall up here and around over 200 different anatomy models, but we just got a new model and here it is is this is a new model that we've gotten and i want to take you through this model today let's begin all right looking at this model here we can see a few different things first off this has part of the skull with part of the brain and the brain stem in it leading down the vertebral column now that includes one two three four five six seven different cervical vertebrae and one two three the first three thoracic vertebrae making up the neck and part of the thoracic region we also can see some ribs ribs one right here and ribs two with the costal cartilage coming around it now the sternum would be right here and the rest of the ribs down here but it doesn't go that low it also shows a bunch of yellow spinal nerves. Look real deep in there. These are the spinal nerves, but they do branch into an anterior ramus and a posterior ramus. You can always tell the anterior from the posterior ramus because the anterior is larger, the posterior is smaller. So you gotta kinda twist these around. Here you go. That's the proper orientation of those rami. Over here though, what's this? Well, this is the brachial plexus of the body. Here's a picture of where the brachial plexus would be in the body. But here we can see it going through a couple muscles. What muscles are these? Well, let's turn it a little bit. And I'll tell you, you got the anterior scalene, the middle scalene, and the posterior scalene. Whoop, crashing over here on the table, but here we can see the posterior more clearly. The posterior scalene is always going to attach to the second rib. It's the only scalene that attaches to the second rib. You guys see that right there? The other two, the middle and the anterior are the first rib. Now the brachial plexus right here is gonna go through the anterior and the middle scalene. That's really important to note. Let's take a look specifically at the brachial plexus. The brachial plexus is composed of spinal nerves C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1 right there. You can see one, two, three, four, five, that range now they're gonna come out and I'll push it down a little bit and they're gonna merge and divide and merge again but the next thing that's up are the trunks the trunks are right in here now we have a superior trunk it's up high it's superior we've got a middle trunk and the middle trunk is a tough one to see but here we can see it from this view middle trunk and then finally an inferior trunk down here. Now those are gonna swing into some crisscross patterns and we talk about the divisions. Now you can have an anterior or a posterior division. Just by looking at it, you can see that this one that my probe is pointing at right now is anterior. This is also anterior up here, but this one back in there is posterior. Here's another posterior and another posterior. Let me show you a picture of which ones are anterior versus posterior. And now you can see those on the screen. Bottom one's anterior as well. Divisions go into cords and the cords from the superior trunk, anterior division goes to the lateral cord. This is the lateral cord right here. The lateral cord merges with the medial cord. So over here is the medial cord. Now, posterior 
Gotta love it, all the posterior divisions going into the posterior cord. What are those branch into? Well, the lateral cord goes into the musculocutaneous nerve. That's this one right here. The medial cord goes into the ulnar nerve right here. The medial cord plus the lateral cord, see how they merge together? They form this brachial plexus M and that M forms the median nerve. I'll get really, really close for you here. That is the median nerve right there. How about the back? How about posterior? Well, posterior is gonna form mainly the radial nerve, mainly the radial nerve right here. Do you guys know what's missing on this model? It's one of the nerves. The axillary nerve is actually missing. It would be branching off the posterior cord along with this radial nerve. You can see it in a picture right here. There should be another really small nerve branching off the posterior cord, but this model doesn't show it. Couple more things to point out here. Let's go posterior with it. And posterior, we're looking at the suboccipital triangle. Notice how there is one, two, three borders to this triangle going on here with the top couple vertebrae and the skull. Well, what are we looking at when we look at this triangle? That's a great question. And we got obliquus capitis superior right here and obliquus capitis inferior right here. We've also got rectus capitis posterior and we got a major division and a minor division. Major is part of that triangle, minor's back in here. All right, and this has been your demo on our new anatomy model. What should we call this model? It's got a bunch of different things in the comments. Let me know, what do you think we should call this model? Thanks for watching.